Hello everyone and welcome back to today's analysis. Now for the 48th episode, I'm going to analyze none other than Eric Killmonger, the main antagonist of the 2018 MCU film, Black Panther. Easily one of the best MCU villains to date, Eric Killmonger can easily be viewed by everyone as the ultimate extremist embodiment of all the struggles that Af the African people uh, confront into a white dominated world. And in this episode I'm going to analyze all the information given about him throughout the film to understand Eric Killmonger and his journey from an orphan who lost everything to the diabolical psychopath and usurper and tyrant wannabe that he has ultimately become. Now without further ado, let's dive in. The man that we all came to know as Eric Killmonger was born sometime in the 1980 in New York and to pr the Prince of Wakanda and Jobu and a simple American woman named Erika Stevens. His original name being Njadaka, but it got illegally changed into Eric Stevens after his mother so he can remain in the United States. And since his very birth, his life wasn't pretty easy, as his father was very busy managing Wakandan duties in comparison to being a father, while his mother was tragically in jail for a crime that she didn't even commit. Of course, his life was pretty normal despite all the problems. However, all his entire life has changed forever once his father was ultimately killed by his own uncle, T'Chaka, the king of Wakanda, because of the fact that he suggested that Wakanda should use his weapons to liberate all the African Americans across the world, as well as his attempt to kill the high priest Luri. Because of this, Eric remained completely broken-hearted and desired revenge on Wakanda for what happened to his father. And while growing up he had top grades in school, he managed to graduate from the United States Naval Academy and from MIT, and ultimately became a Navy SEAL and fought in the war on terror, in both Afghanistan and Iraq to be more specific, and he was also deployed in Africa. He eventually, by 2016, after he realized that T'Chaka died, and his cousin T'Challa became the new Black Panther, as well as the new King of Wakanda, he desired to enact his plan of revenge by coming to the said country to, pro to challenge the others about his father's death. And because of this, Eric began to collaborate with a terrorist known as Ulysses Claude in order to uh, find his way back to Wakanda. And once he did, he confronted T'Challa and the others about, uh, about his father's demise, as well as the fact they all sit comfy while the rest of the Africans across the world all suffer. And with this, Eric challenged T'Challa to a duel for the throne, which managed to uh, get Eric to victorious, beating T'Challa and throwing him off the waterfall, as well as assuming the title as the new king of Wakanda. And after he realized that Zuri was the reason why his father died, he mercilessly killed him and so as part of his revenge. And now, on the throne, Eric sought to use Wakanda's weapons in order to wage war on the entire world and ultimately to free all the African Americans and overthrow the, the white-led world order so the black people can rule the world. But now, before I go any further, we all should stop and ask ourselves, is Eric evil? The reason why I'm asking this is an un undeniable that what he does is absolutely evil. Still, you can deny the fact that he is very sympathetic at the same time, as he does have a genuine tragic backstory, and given the fact that his father was killed by his own uncle, and his mother died in prison, and he only desired to help the Af African Americans across the world, something that even his father also wanted to before his eventual death. Of course, Eric, however, is far from being an actually altruistic person, as he uses this as an excuse for him to gain power, as well as to wage war with the world, a world that took away everything from him, and he will desire to bury everyone who even dares to mention the child's name, not to mention that he has no problem to kill his cousins and aunt, given the fact that they have nothing to do with their father's demise. Thus finally proving that Eric, whilst could be argued to a certain degree they might be somewhat of a well-intentioned extremist, is the downright psychopath with very little to no humanity whatsoever, and with a heart full of hatred and anger. And in the end, the answer to the question is still pretty much yes, Eric is evil. Although, to be honest, he is quite a tragic kind of evil. And in the end, the Chala managed to return and officially challenged him once again for the throne, and managed to defeat him and end his madness once and for all. However, even after that, Eric kind of won, as T'Challa exposed to Wakanda to the world and had it to join the United Nations, finally designing to bring Wakanda out of his era of isolationism. So in the end, who was Eric Killmonger? He was nothing more but a simple man who lost basically everything in life. A man that will be consumed by hatred and revenge, and will do anything, and sacrifice everyone and everything to achieve his ultimate goals. A man that could easily be called as one of the greatest and the most realistic villains ever made in cinema. Thanks for watching everyone, please don't forget to give a like and subscribe, and have a nice day. I lived my entire life waiting for this moment.
I train, I lie, I kill. Just to get here. I killed in America. Afghanistan. Iraq. I took life from my own brothers and sisters right here on this continent. And all this death. Just so I could kill you.